Jonas here, glad to be back again. So they say that you shouldn't really mix camera gear with liquids, but that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And I have a feeling it's gonna get pretty messy. Oh, sh we're talking droplet photography. Maybe not so much necessarily science filmmaking and photography, but it is really cool. And the setup that I have here can be used for various types of science related topics as well, which I'm gonna come back to in later videos. So I wanna show you the setup here, just like an overview. This is my kitchen. I have a valve here with the liquid inside and that's gonna release drops of the liquid into this other container with another liquid. And then I have my camera set up here on a tripod and it's connected to my flash which is right off here with the cord, so I can hold it out to the side. Uh, that's about it, except for one very important piece that is right here. This is called a Pluto trigger, and it's connecting my camera to the valve, and then also communicating with my phone. So I can use my phone to tell the valve to release droplets into the liquid, uh, which then communicates back to my camera to fire the flash and take the photograph at the right moment. This is pretty awesome. I wanna show you how this is all works. So let's just dig right into it and have fun. I should say that taking pictures of just a drop bouncing on a water surface doesn't really need any of this extra stuff. Just a simple dropper like a pipette and a camera and a flash. But the special effect we're after with this setup is the collision of two droplets. The first one hitting the surface and bouncing up and the second one coming down and crashing into the first one at the right time. To be able to take a photo of this happening, an automated trigger like the Pluto trigger is pretty much necessary. The second thing is the liquid. Using just plain water can look cool like this. And the next step is to add food coloring to give it some color. But to take things to an even better level is to make the liquid thicker. Some photographers I've seen use santum gum mixed in the water to make it more viscous. And in the lack of that, I tried to dissolve normal white sugar in hot water, which actually worked really well. Maybe not as good as santum gum, but just that little extra thickness still made a big difference. And another favorite is to use milk. And I also recommend to alternate and try different liquids in either the valve or below for different effects. For most of the photos I took, I set up a black background to isolate the droplets. The black background is just my own preference, but background color and being able to lighten up the background with a second flash can also give some awesome results. It is really the flash or flashes that make this whole process possible by freezing the action at the right time. So it's generally recommended to turn off any other light sources around the setup if possible. Now you have to find a focus point, which can be tricky. So I test out the dropper, try to remember where the drop hits and then place a pen or something where the drop hits the surface and focus on that. The last thing is figuring out the right timing for the collision to happen and for the camera to capture it. My goodness, it takes so much playing around with the settings and trying to get the uh, timing right and the size of the droplets right. You can't predict exactly how a collision will look like, but using the Pluto trigger you can determine the size of the droplets, how many milliseconds apart they should be released, and then the delay of the camera flash before it fires. You can even add a third droplet as well. And once you have the right intervals figured out, you just stick to that until you're done or change any of the parameters. Remember that if you switch container to something of a different size, if you change the liquid to something of a different viscosity, or if you move the valve up or down, then you might also have to adjust the interval settings. Now once you get going, there's a slight risk you won't be able to stop. And holy crap, I totally lost track of time doing this. All right, I hope you enjoy that as much as I have. I've spent a couple of nights completely losing track of time and getting lost in this. This is... Ooh, it's really addictive, but it is a lot of fun. I know that there is uh, some cost involved in getting this set up, but considering the amount of things that you can do with this Pluto, Pluto trigger, uh, besides just doing droplet photography, I think it's money uh, worth spending uh, if you want an automated trigger for your camera. This is an awesome piece of equipment, I think. Uh, also, the setup that I have is somewhat slimmed down. I only have one flash. And many people that do this uh, more professionally, they use several different flashes to light things up from different sides. And I agree, it does look a lot better, but um, I wanted to show you kind of my slimmed down version and show you that it is possible with only one flash. I wanna give a shout out to especially one guy who does this 
incredibly well and he also has some awesome tutorials on this topic. First Man Photography, definitely check out his channel. It's got some awesome tips and tricks on droplet photography if you're interested in diving deeper into this field. Uh, I wanna thank you all for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos coming out on filmmaking tips and tricks. All right, see you soon. All right, that'll do for this setup. <clears throat> Time to change things up.